And in the next example, we have a bed of nails. And we're not going to do the math here. We're just going to talk about this from a qualitative standpoint. A person can lie down on a bed of nails and not be harmed. And you might have seen something like this. You have a board. And then nailed into the board from the bottom are all these nails. And they're sticking up. So the sharp points are sticking up toward the top. And you can lie down on the bed of nails and not be hurt. But this only works if there are a lot of nails, typically hundreds or thousands. So I'm only drawing a few. If there aren't many nails, they would stick into you. They would break the skin. It would, um, would hurt very badly and could result in serious injury. But if there are a lot of nails, then the force is spread out over many, many nails, which means there's a very small force on each nail. And it's not enough to do any damage. Here's a picture of a little boy lying on a bed of nails. And this is not some kind of cruel punishment or anything. This is a typical physics demonstration. There are lots and lots of nails there. Now obviously if he were lying on just one nail, it would stab him. That would be awful. But if he's lying on lots of them, the force is spread out over not the area of one nail point, but the area of many, many nail points. And even though one, the point of one nail it could be very small, a very sharp point with a very small area, if we multiply that by many, many nails, hundreds or thousands of nails, it becomes a large area. So the force ends up being distributed over a pretty large area. And so the, the force at one nail point isn't all that strong. Some people do another phase to the demonstration here. They'll put a person here lying on the bed of nails. So let me let me try to draw a person here. So let's say here's the person, here's their feet down here, and they're lying there. So that's their shoulders and their head. They're lying on the bed of nails and then someone puts uh, maybe puts a board on top of them here and they put a cinder block like a giant, one of those giant gray bricks and it's sitting there on top of the board and then someone comes along with a sledgehammer a giant sledgehammer and smashes the cinder block and the person lying between the sledgehammer pounding the cinder block and the bed of nails is unharmed and, and, and that's a really great demonstration and what happens here is even though the force of the hammer hitting the, hit, hitting the cinder block um, pushes down on the person a bit more. The area of the nails is still large enough, that force is still spread out over a large enough area, that no harm is done. Also, the block shattering, it takes some energy to shatter that block into lots of pieces. So a lot of the energy of motion, what we call kinetic energy, a lot of the damage that could be done by the sledgehammer gets done to the block. So a lot of the energy of the hammer gets dissipated by the block. Instead of damaging the person, it damages the block. We say the energy or the damage is absorbed by the block shattering rather than by the person being harmed. So it's, it's an impressive demonstration because the block shatters and, and pieces of cinder block are flying everywhere. But realize that that block shattering is the block taking the damage instead of the person. If the block didn't break, it would be more likely to hurt because the force would be transmitted directly through the block to the person. As it is, that force goes into breaking the block into lots of little pieces. But it's an impressive demo to see that done.